All right, today I'm going to talk about the Antichrist and the role that he will play during the tribulation period. But before that happens, uh, we know that the rapture of the church will take place pre-tribulation. And once this shocking event takes place, the uh, rapture, or I'm sorry, the uh, tribulation period will begin, but it probably won't start simultaneously with uh, the rapture of the church. There's a possibility that time will go by. How much time, no one really knows, but we know that time will take place. Uh, we do know that uh, when the millennium uh, takes place, that Satan will be bound for a thousand years. But once the thousand years is up, the, uh, uh, that Satan will return to the earth, and in time he will uh, bring, bring about a great rebellion that will take place here on the earth. So we can see already with an example of this nature that it will take some time for either God to raise up the Antichrist or for God to raise up the Antichrist through Satan. But whoever he is, given the late hour of the time that we're living in, he's probably on the earth right now. One thing you do need to remember, as uh, Jesus did select Judas to be a part of his 12 disciples, and he was ultimately possessed by Satan. That's likely the direction that will ta be taken, that God will actually select the Antichrist, cause him to rise. And when the time comes for Satan to declare himself to be God, he will possess the Antichrist. And through this man, he will declare himself to be God and uh, for the world to worship him. And by his side will be another man known as the false prophet. And we'll touch upon what his duties will be. But basically, his duties will be to promote the Antichrist. He's like the second man in charge. But his job will be to promote the Antichrist and the worship of the Antichrist. Getting back to the beginning, when the uh, rapture does take place, uh, it's likely that time will... Uh, will uh, go by and at some point in time either God like I said will select the Antichrist or Satan through uh, God will you know with his permission will select the Antichrist well this Antichrist will come on the scene and he will bring about a seven year peace accord now you can call it a confirmation of a peace accord or whatever it is that you you know whatever way you want to call it but he will bring peace through many that's found in Daniel 9 20 uh, 25 through 27 now, in that same scripture, it says that the people who conquered uh, and, and overthrew Jerusalem and burned it to the ground will later on, during the tribulation period, be, where, uh, be the area where the Antichrist will rise up. So that is uh, the Roman Empire and today's uh, European Union. So it's my belief that he will rise up out of the European Union. And it also says that he will have ten kingdoms, or at least that will be the amount of kingdoms that will uh, lend him uh, his power. Now, how that is done, no one really knows right now. It could be very well that the European Union is reduced to a core unit of 10. And we know right now there's a lot more than 10 nations in the European Union. Or it could be that uh, the uh, P5 plus 1 does climb to 10 nations and that he will be the, uh, the rising power or the rising ruler that will come out of that P5 or should I say P9 plus 1. And frankly, I kind of lean toward this uh, possibility. But I certainly don't discount the fact that he could rise up strictly out of a ten-nation kingdom out of the European Union. But there is one aspect that uh, comes out of Daniel 8, I'm sorry, Daniel 7, 24, and also Revelation chapter 17, that he will be the leader of this ten-nation kingdom. But three of those uh, nations will have to be subdued. So let's say, for instance, that he is the leader of a new conglomerate known as the P9 plus 1. The Bible says that three of those nations would ultimately have to be uh, uh, subdued and put down. Now, whether that will happen before the uh, rapture, I'm sorry, before the tribulation period begins or after the tribulation period starts is unknown. But it will start. Now, let's go, let's go ahead and let's get right into it. Let's, the tribulation period will begin when the Antichrist makes a a uh, seven-year uh, strengthened peace accord with Israel and many. Now, I believe that this will be something of the middle, uh, some type of umbrella agreement out of the Middle East that will likely end the civil war in Syria and also will bring uh, some type of agreement to Iran and will include Yemen and also uh, the modern Arab world along with Israel and will probably create a Palestinian state. And the crown jewel will be the separation of Israel, I'm sorry, of Jerusalem. Uh, Israel will get one half of that and the other half will go to the Palestinians for their state capitals. Frankly, I do not believe that, it will, uh, that God will allow this to uh, 
uh, come to fruition, I believe, that before Jerusalem is split, which will be the last jewel of this agreement, I believe that, God, that the Lord will come back and, and stop this from happening. But I believe that it will start, all this will start with a seven-year uh, peace accord that will be confirmed and strengthened. But at the same time, this is something, this is another way of identifying what the start of the tribulation period. God will send his two witnesses uh, to Jerusalem and they will preach the gospel uh, to all of Jerusalem. And there will be a great revival that will take place where 144,000 witnesses will take place. But like I said, at the same time, they will also perform great miracles. And this will be known and seen by everyone worldwide. And the Bible says these two witnesses will not be able to be killed. So you'll know you're in the tribulation period when the Antichrist brings about a seven-year uh, peace accord. And at the same time, God raises up two very uh, supernatural witnesses. And as I've said many times, when the, when the tribulation period begins, this will go from a natural to a supernatural world. Things that you never thought were imaginable will become imaginable. Well, now at this time, I do not believe that Satan will really understand the, what's going on in the world. And frankly, I believe that God will be more instrumental in directing the rise of the Antichrist at this time than uh, Satan will. But at the midway point of the tribulation period, Satan will be in a war of wars in heaven. And the Bible says in Revelation chapter 12 that Satan will lose and that he and his minions will be... Um, thrown out of heaven and will be confined to the earth. Now I believe that all of the demons that are thrown out and that are confined to the earth will go out and possess mankind. So this will be a very demon possessed world at this time. So if you, if you really don't know how evil this world can get until you have lived in a world that is possessed by demons. But the demon of demons known as Satan will find his ultimate antichrist and he will possess him at that time. And at that point in time, uh, the Antichrist will become a vessel of Satan. And at the midway point of the tribulation period, he will walk into the temple, which will have been built by this time, uh, in Jerusalem on the Temple Mount, and will declare himself to be God, desecrate, desecrate the temple, and will declare that everyone must worship him. At the same time, the false prophet will be promoting him, and he will cause a statue uh, to be brought and erected uh, on the Temple Mount. And it will speak uh, supernaturally and tell everyone that they must worship the Antichrist. They must bow down to him. They must take his mark. And that no one will be able to buy or sell without that mark. And certainly no one will. And so the Bible says in Revelation chapter 13 verse 8 that everyone will take the mark of the beast except for those who refuse to do so and uh, uh, they will uh, uh, worship the Lord. So at this point in time, there will only be two religions on the earth. And you know, I get questions all the time regarding, well, why don't you believe that the Antichrist will be a Muslim? And many give me different scenarios as to why they believe that the Antichrist will eventually be Muslim and that the religion of the Antichrist will be the Muslim religion. Well, even if the Antichrist does turn out to be a Muslim, he won't stay a Muslim. And that goes whether or not, uh, whether he's a Christian, he may profess to be a Christian or some other religion, but there will come a time when he's possessed that he will no longer regard any of the religions, and that's found in Daniel 11:37. And talking about the Antichrist, it says that neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, which is Jesus, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. Now, some people look at this verse and say, well, he'll end up being a Jew because it says that he won't regard the God of his fathers nor desire women, which is uh, translated as Jesus. Well, that could very well be true. He may be a Jew, but ultimately he will not regard uh, his uh, father's religion nor his ancestral religion. But his only goal will be to exalt himself. In other words, his religion will be the worship of him or of Satan. You know, that's been Satan's plan from the beginning is for him to be worshipped and for him alone. He never wanted to be the promoter of any other religion or God. He wanted to be the promoter of himself. The Bible says that he tried to exalt himself above the heavens or above God. He wanted to be greater and higher than God. So he's simply not going to be a promoter of another God that's here on earth, but he will ultimately promote himself. So for, for so the, he will not be a Muslim because the bottom line is is Satan would not have any god whether on in heaven or on earth higher than him. 
So he's not going to be promoting Allah or anyone else. And he's not going to be hiding behind some earthly God in order to deflect or take away um, from the true God, which will be the God of heaven. And I should also say that, look back at Revelation chapter 13, verse 8 again. It says that, that everyone on earth will worship the Antichrist except for those who accept Jesus Christ as Lord. There's no exception. The, there will only be two religions. Well, you might say, well, how in the world is that true? You think everybody's going to promote or go right from uh, serving their God to serving the Antichrist or Jesus Christ, and that's it? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Well, how in the world might that happen? Well, let me tell you about what will happen during the tribulation period. The Bible says that when the two witnesses come on the earth, they will uh, start a great revival in, on the streets of Jerusalem, where that will bring about 144,000 powerful and Holy, Holy Ghost-driven uh, witnesses who will go throughout the world and will preach the gospel. That will be their only goal. From that, many will come to know the Lord worldwide. But on top of that, the Bible says that God will send out angels throughout the world. And that's found in Revelation chapter 14, 9 through 11. Who will preach the gospel to every single person in the world, bar none, in their own language. In other words, these angels are going to go all over the world and preach the unfiltered gospel to every single person in their own language so they, they'll have a clear and precise understanding of who the true God is. So there won't be mis any misunderstandings as to whether Allah is true or whether Confucius is true or any of these other so-called gods. Every man and woman will know who, the, who and what the true God is. And according to scripture, they will not revert back to their old God, but will worship and serve and take the mark of the Antichrist. There is absolutely no uh, evidence as to anyone reverting back from that point on to their old God. In fact, it would be stupid to do so after every, uh, you've seen a flying angel in the air telling you to worship God, the only true God, and that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you. And the only way to, uh, to heaven is through the Lord Jesus Christ, and don't worship uh, the Antichrist, but worship God. This would be unrefutable uh, evidence that the God of heaven is the true God. In fact, even Satan is going to legitimize God. It says in uh, Revelation chapter 13 that he will lift up his hands and curse the God of heaven. So even the world will see that the Antichrist believes that the God of heaven is real. So I don't think there's any way in the world that anyone is going to believe there's any other true uh, religion other than the Antichrist and God. But in rejecting Jesus as Lord, listen to this, this is going to be the great deception. After God has sent multiple ways in which you could come to know the Lord, through the witnesses, through the 144,000 witnesses, through angels flying in the air, uh, presenting the gospel to every man and woman in his own language, if in fact you reject the, the Lord Jesus Christ after that, you will believe the lie of the Antichrist. That is the rejection or the, the uh, deception that the Bible speaks of in 2 Thessalonians 2, 9 through 12. But getting back to Satan on this situation, uh, just as the, in the Ten Commandments, where the first two commandments are, you shall have no other gods before me, and number two is you shall not make any idols, that will be Satan's uh, two commandments as well. There will be no gods that will be before him. And there certainly will be no other gods as far as Allah and uh, Muhammad or Confucius or whomever, Buddha. They will not exist. But as I've said many times, I don't believe that there will be any doubt as to who the two gods are of that world at that time will be. The Antichrist and also Jesus Christ. And you know, the Bible says many times in the book of Revelation that the, even those who took the mark of the Antichrist will know who the true God is. And when he brings plagues down upon them, they will, even knowing who he is and who brought the plagues and who has the power to stop them, will curse God and will blaspheme his name. And that, my friend, is all part of the great deception, knowing the truth but denying it. Now lastly, how will the Antichrist rise to power? What will his, be, his uh, claim to fame? Well, I believe it's found in Revelation, or I'm sorry, in Daniel 8, 23 through 25, and it says, And in the latter time, of their kingdom when the transgressors are come to the full a king of fierce continents and understanding dark sentences shall stand up and his power shall be mighty but not by his own power in other words he's going to be his power is going to be lent to him uh, by those uh, of the ten kingdoms and he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people 
So no one's going to be able to stand in his way. And that also is spoken of in Revelation chapter 13 as well, verse 4, where it says, The people will say, Who is like unto the beast and who can stand up against the beast? In verse 25 it says, And through his policy also he shall uh, cause craft to prosper. Some people say that is witchcraft. And I do believe that witchcraft will be prevalent during that time. And also, I believe through his deceptions that he'll make the world think that things are going to get better. Even though on the outside, turmoil and the uh, birth pangs of disaster are becoming more intense and and getting closer and closer together. Frankly, I believe when the rapture of the church takes place, I believe that the birth pangs will suddenly speed up and become more intense. And yes, earthquakes are uh, increasing now, but you think they're increasing now. Wait until the rapture takes place, and that's when they're really going to start speeding up. And the seas will roar, and perplexity perplexity will be upon the earth. And the fear of what many believe is about to come upon them will rush over the entire world. Have you ever had that sudden feeling of fear that you think something awful is about ready to take place? Well, this is the way the world will be at this point in time, many times over. And the Antichrist will, be, will try to lead this rudderless ship back to some type of normalcy, even in the face of increasing birth pangs. But no matter what he may try or do, eventually the Bible says that sudden destruction will come upon the earth. And that will likely take place after the Antichrist declares himself to be God and that everyone has taken the mark one way or the other, to either worship uh, the Antichrist or to worship God. And if you don't know the Lord today, today is the day of salvation. You know, 150,000 people die every single day. The Bible says that the vast majority of them will end up in a burning hell. Don't let that happen to you. Come to the Lord as Savior today. You know, you may die before the rapture of the church. You may die before the tribulation period. You may die today. And you Christians, if you have loved ones who do not know the Lord at this late hour, I would suggest that you get them a a copy of my Tribulation Period Survival Guide. I have two versions. One is a uh, downloadable version that you can either take to the print shop and have printed out. Or you can buy a uh, copy of uh, my paperback version uh, that I've already created. It's uh, it's only about seven, eight, eight dollars And actually, it's usually cheaper than going down and getting it printed out at the print shop anyway. But I would certainly recommend that you get a copy of this because the first thing it tells you or tells the person who's reading it is that they need to come to the Lord as Savior. Yes, it also gives them survival tips and gives them a guide to uh, through the tribulation period and how to survive it. But their most important uh, decision they're going to make in this book is to come to the Lord as Savior. So I recommend that you get a copy of this today for them. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.